you came up with five questions that are so common. Why do men do that? And what's interesting to me about it is why do we ask these questions? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Second Act TV. I want to welcome back Sandy Weiner, the dating coach and author of Choice Points in Dating. Sandy, thanks for joining us again. Thank you for having me back again. Well, you always have such great advice. <laughs> and to, today, I, I think this is going to be an interesting conversation. You know, one of the things, of course, that we cover on this channel so much is what women, you know, what they want to know about men. And, you know, most of the time I have men on to address that, you know, what do men think? What do men want? Well, it's, you know, it's never better than to ask what, you know, the man. <laughs> What's interesting about today's segment is that you came up with five questions that are so common that women, you know, want to know why do men do that? And what's interesting to me about it is why do we ask these questions? <laughs> what does that really <laughs> say about us? And, and maybe more of an introspective look at, you know, what these questions mean in the long run. So uh, anything you want to say before we get going on this? Yeah, I mean, I think so much of the questioning is rhetorical, because obviously, mm -hmm. they're not asking the person who's involved. They're just like, why do they do that? <laughs> and I, I remember when I was teaching boundaries with my co host, Teresa Byrne, we would just say things that other people would say, like, who does that? So I just heard why do they do that so many times that I thought I'm going to do a video and an article about this. Yeah. And I chose some of the top questions yeah. that I've heard over and over again. Yeah. Well, let's 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 go with number one here. Uh, why do men withdraw from women? And and we are puzzled about that. Why do they suddenly withdraw? Yeah. So there's again, we don't know because yeah. every situation is different. But there have been many many situations where somebody ghosts instead of telling the woman that they've lost interest, or they don't bring up a difficult conversation and they just go and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And so again, this isn't, this isn't a man issue. This is mm -hmm. a people issue. And we're afraid to talk about the truth, to say how we feel. And I think that it's not nefarious. I don't think that men are withdrawing because they're being mean. I think they really don't know what to say and they don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you a, a real quick story. I was on a panel of, uh, dating and relationship experts mm -hmm. at a huge event. And it was basically men sat on one side, women sat on the other. Mm -hmm. And it was just all about how do we understand each other? And one person asked, why does men say they're going to call and never call? Mm -hmm. And she said, I have to say that the man, there's a man in this audience who did that to me. And <laughs> And if he wants to answer, he can. And he stood up and he said, I really liked you, but I didn't feel a romantic connection. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. It was so refreshing to have it actually answered by the man who did yeah. it. <laughs> but we almost never asked those questions. Yeah. So again, this was the perfect example of he just didn't want to hurt her. But you know, to anybody who's listening, we, we want to know the truth usually. Yeah. Well, and I think that if you, if what's to me, the background or maybe the backstory of that question is if, if you, you know, why do men always withdraw? Maybe it's something, you know, you're doing <laughs> that, that is causing that as well. I think that's why this question is so common, you know, it, and you don't, you don't want it to be your fault. You it's, it's the man's fault. Why do men do this? So I, anyway, I find, I found that interesting. Let me okay. address that for a second too, because I think that's a great point. And I, as a coach, I'm always just pointing women back to themselves because we're the only person we can control. So if there's anything that we did, did or said, we can do better next time. But there's a book called Have a Met Hello by Rachel Greenwald. And she talks about why men didn't call women back. That was the whole book was her thesis from her MBA at Harvard. And she did it on this topic. And she did exit interviews with a thousand men. And the number one reason why men didn't call 
was completely different from what women thought. And the, the number one reason was the woman was too bossy mm -hmm. and controlling on the date. She had no idea mm -hmm. because she thought she was intimidating. He wasn't intimidated. He was turned off. Yeah. So, you know, that's it. It's a whole other video, but it's an, an important topic. Yes. It is, it is a really important topic. Thank you for, for raising, that would be fun to do a topic on that or a segment mm -hmm. on that. Let's talk about that later. Okay. The second here, and that surprised me that this came up as common for some reason. Why do men text instead of call? That yeah, comes I up mean, just, and, 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 I mean, I Googled it. It's all over the, you know, the, the, the Google, all, all over the internet. Yeah, so I have a question for women. Do you ask him to call? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, have you said I prefer calling over texting? Mm -hmm. When you don't speak up, then he has no idea. And texting is so common today that mm -hmm. people just text. Yeah. And we wait for men to take the initiative. Well, if he mm -hmm. liked me, he'd call. Well, no, maybe not. So I recommend that women say, hey, I really am enjoying getting to know you on text, but the best mm -hmm. way for me is to be on a call and to mm -hmm. actually meet. And if you've already been dating, and he still prefers texting over calling after you have already said what you've said, then mm -hmm. that's a whole different story. But I think generally people text instead of calling. Yeah. Well, and you're right. You, you have to speak. If it bothers you, bring it up and then you'll know right away if he's interested or not <laughs> or, or, or quicker. You know, if he doesn't want to call, then, you know, it's time to move on. So mm -hmm. I, again, it struck me that that's interesting that, that that is a common question. I guess it's a common behavior. Get, we'll throw it out to our men. You know, is there an answer to that? If so, put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Now here, here's one, number three. This is, I think our men can learn from this, maybe. Why do men flirt with the waitress? That's that comes up as a very, very common concern. You know, I, I have my own opinion on this. Let me throw it over to you. Why do women ask that? Well, it's threatening if he's flirting with anybody, right? And especially if you have had somebody who cheated on you in the past, mm -hmm. then you're going to be hyper aware that this person is is acting ov overly flirty with a total stranger. Right. And so some of it can feel like rude behavior or you're disrespectful to me and you're flirting with the waitress. And so I think we have to define flirting. Mm -hmm. And if he's just being friendly and you see him do this with everyone, then he's just a friendly guy. Mm -hmm. If you talk to him about it, and again, I would say each person has their own story. Mm -hmm. And tell him how you feel and mm -hmm. ask him not to do it <laughs> and tell him it bothers you. See yeah. how he responds. And if he says, you know, get over it and deal with it, it's your problem, mm -hmm. then do not date that person anymore. But I had a client who now is engaged to this man who started out flirting with wait waitresses and it really bothered her. And she mentioned it to him and he, he had no idea. He was like, mm -hmm. I'm just being friendly. Mm -hmm. And he was much more conscious of it. He did not do anything to, to be overtly flirty in the future. And mm -hmm. obviously it's worked out because they're getting married. I think uh, what the, the phenomena to me there is that if you think about it, a waitress is in a subservient position. They're waiting on the man. So you're, you're most more than likely, you're always going to get some kind of positive response. And I think men get so used to that, that, yeah, I agree with you. Maybe they don't even realize it. But I think that dynamic of, of waitress and flirty and the response they get is something that can be intoxicating to some people. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. I think so. I think that makes sense. I, I love this one. <laughs> and, and again, this is, these are common questions that women ask. Why would a woman ask this? this? I love this. Why do men believe? Why do men believe when they ask what's wrong and you say, I'm fine? Why would they believe that? <laughs> <laughs> because they're looking for a straight answer and you're telling them a lie. And they don't know that it's a lie because you haven't told them the truth. So why would they suspect that you're not telling them the truth? 
And now you're asking, why would he believe it? It's his fault. (laughs) Right, exactly. I mean, I think that is just so interesting. And again, I I Googled all these because I I thought, (laughs) you know, yeah. Why, why do men believe that? Don't they know that, you know, I, what, what do we want or what do, honestly, I don't, I, I don't do that. I did learn that. If I, if I say I'm fine, that, that is, I'm mad. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's not, you know, it, but h- h- how can we, what, what can we tell women <laughs> and, and men for that matter, you know, why this is such a big issue and to not, not do this. Women need to learn to be more truthful and speak up. It's very hard to do. It's why I teach communication skills and boundary setting skills, because it's really hard for us to do it. We are, we are used to beating around the bush, making light of things, being passive aggressive. And so saying what's really wrong is vulnerable, but it's important. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I think that men can ask the question a little bit differently. They can notice, you know, your face, you look upset. Can, do you want to talk about it? Mm-hmm. That's very different than, is anything wrong? It's very hard to label what is wrong or mm-hmm. how to speak about it, but also you need to create the safe space for somebody to actually share what's wrong without you biting their head off yeah. and actually listen to what they have to say. <laughs> so I think we both can learn a lot about how to, how to listen to each other. And I mean, I just had this conversation with someone in my family who had been visiting and I said, he called today um, just to say thank you for hosting him. And I said, you know, I noticed that you seemed off. That's not like you, what's going on? Is everything all right? Mm -hmm. So that's very different from what's wrong with you? You were so quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. I'm fine. Yeah. But he knows that he can talk to me about anything because I've already had so many conversations with him that have been deep and accepting. I, I think, again, that what, what this question says about women who would actually ask this is that somehow they were get, getting the attention that they were a- actually seeking that, you know, you want them to dig. Well, no, you're not fine. What's wrong? Tell You know, mm-hmm. uh, men don't do that. I, I, they certainly don't like to do it. So yeah. it's, yeah, stay away from the, from the, I'm fine. And I'm, I'm pointing at myself, but I, I, <laughs> I have learned that it just doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. You know? I, I don't like when people do it to me. Mm-hmm. Like if a, a friend of mine said, I'm fine. And she wasn't, I, I don't have the energy to start probing, honestly. Right. right. But okay. You're fine. Then I, I, I okay. totally get it. Yeah. And so <laughs> hopefully that sunk in somewhere if, if needed, if it needed to be. Lastly, I think you alluded to this earlier too. Why do men tell you they'll call you after a good first date and then don't? Now, to me, the answer is fairly obvious, but why do, why do so many women ask that? Yeah, so I think a lot of men at the end of a date is sort of a knee-jerk reaction to say, uh, let's get together again. Mm-hmm. And then it's, again, not to hurt your feelings or whatever, but... I just, I don't know why anybody has to end a date with any promise of the future. You -hmm. you know, let it, let it sit and figure out if you do want to see each other, unless you both are so excited about seeing each other because women do it too. They'll say, yeah, I'd love to see you again. And they totally Mm -hmm. don't mean it, you know, or they'll get on a call and say, yeah, I'd love to go on a date with you. And then they don't mean it. So we both do it to each other. We don't want to hurt each other's feelings a lot of times, Elsie, you can have the most amazing connection on a first date, but it's mm-hmm. not romantic. Mm-hmm. You can have this intellectual conversation. Mm-hmm. You can talk about your shows that you have in common, and it could be so much fun or the games that you went to or work. Yeah. Often, you know, having those work discussions, they are not sexy at all, no. but they are <laughs> interesting. So yeah. he walks away and goes, she'd be a good colleague, mm-hmm. good friend. Mm -hmm. But I don't really feel that romantic connection. Mm -hmm. And I think men are better at trusting that feeling than women. Women are like, yeah, I don't feel it, but I'm going to try again. And then I'll try again. And maybe I can Mm -hmm. force myself to like him if I go on 16 dates with him. But yeah, so, (laughs) (laughs) so yeah. And like we mentioned before, there's a whole book on this, so why Mm -hmm. men don't call. And it's fascinating that women really think completely differently than what men, the reasoning behind why men don't call back. 
I mean, again, the, to me, it's fairly obvious. There's, um, for whatever reason, the interest isn't there. You know, that doesn't mm-hmm. want to see you again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Did, he, did he forget to call? That was uh, somebody said, oh, maybe, you know, we just forgot. How do you forget? No, there's there's no interest there. <laughs> no, so, we don't need know. to remind people that we exist. You yeah. know, no, exactly. So just, yeah, he's, you know, he's not that into you. And, and, and that's the bottom, the bottom line. Anything else you want to add on this segment? I, I thought, I, I don't know, there's, you can really go deep into these questions if we want to. Yeah, I think one of the things that really was life changing for me, because I used to ruminate about all these things, and mm-hmm. always just why did you do that? Why didn't you call me? Yeah. And I, I think when I started to point back at myself and say, why would I want to date a man who said he was going to call and didn't call back? Why would I want to date a man who didn't get curious about how I was feeling or who mm-hmm. date, who flirted with the waitress and didn't stop when I spoke up. Why would I want to date a man who did that? So there's a lot of like, I'm so confused. He did this and he said that, and I don't really know. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you're living in that state of confusion, point back to yourself. Why mm-hmm. would I want to date a man who did that? And I would say the same thing for men. Why would I want to date a woman who was inconsistent or who said she was going to do something and didn't follow through? You know, if if that goes against your values and what's important to you, then just move on. Yeah, exactly. Ask yourself, why, why am I, why do I want to know why am I asking these questions? And there's interesting answers, I think, behind that. So thank you, Sandy. Always love having you here. I will link to your book choice points in dating sitting, no, that way right behind me. (laughs) And of course your website, so people can get a hold of you directly. And I look forward to having you back again soon on Second Act TV. (music) 